What's up, bitches? Last week we talked about some horrible things that happen in our world, like the patriarchy and sexism and other little shitty gems that color our society. And it's just so easy to feel depressed and angry because number one, you realize that everything in the world is fucked up and it's fucked up on purpose. And all you want to know is who made this up, who came up with it, and why did we all go along with it? I mean, at least that's what I thought when I first started learning about all of these philosophical ways of exploring and understanding our world. And it's pretty easy to figure out whose fault this is, and it's pretty much every single person's fault, except people like Martin Luther King and Gandhi and their followers who actually fought for a better world. Because if you think about it, every person that turns a blind eye to everything that goes on that is wrong, they're just as guilty. For allowing it to continue and in addition to being all of our faults there is one more thing that contributes to horrible things like this to exist in our society it's something that is called the superstructure and if you haven't heard about the superstructure then you haven't been reading Karl Marx and you're not living the life that you're meant to be living so let me just save you the google search and let you know that Karl Marx looked at the world and so the society was divided into two parts there's the base which is essentially the economy and everything that is involved in money and the production of services and goods, etc, etc. And then on top of that base is a superstructure, which in our society comes to be things like art and our culture, religion, science, entertainment, books, etc, etc. Karl Marx said that the superstructure is going to mirror whatever conditions exist on the base because Da, it's the base that creates what's on the top, right? It's really hard for us not to take the things that we experience at work out into the rest of our lives. It's pretty difficult to keep the two separate. So if you can imagine society at large is having the same issue. If at workplace we have a lot of experiences and relationships that are based on inequality, whether that's on power, on money, or gender, race, whatever, sexual orientation, Whatever those inequalities are, unfortunately, they're going to show up in our art, in our entertainment, and in our, even in our religion. However, Marx, the godfather of this channel, he went even further than that and said, this superstructure is another thing that allows that base to remain the way that it is and to reinforce it to stay that way in the future. Because the things that are in the superstructure, like art, and religion, they can be misused, and they have been misused to get the masses to behave in certain ways, to accept that, you know, there's the one right God, and then there's all the other wrong gods. Things like TVs and movies telling women that they should be mothers and wives by only giving us those roles to look up to on the screen. And of course, like we were discussing in our last video, the opposite for men, that they need to be in positions of power and you know, they need to be strong and not show any emotion. And when your brain is constantly exposed to those ideas, unfortunately, it's very likely that your brain will internalize those kind of things, which is why people get scared when they see a Muslim person on the plane, which being Muslim has nothing to do with people hijacking a plane, but the idea has been ingrained in their mind to the point that they cannot help themselves, but to also act on those ideas that are residing maybe in the back of their heads. By now, it's been close to probably a hundred years that we have grown up with TV and movies and books telling us how to live our lives. And now that younger and younger people are being given access to computers and telephones, can you imagine how terrible the world could be if we don't get a handle on the superstructure? So in essence, the superstructure is just another beautiful thing being used as a tool for evil. Art, religion, which could potentially be beautiful, I don't know, to somebody out there, but yet, Religion celebrates violence, celebrates the repression of homosexuality, when it's really supposed to be about brotherly love and loving Jesus and going to church. As I have told you in other videos, I went through a really big existential crisis my last year of college because all of these little realizations that we've been talking about on this channel, they mm. broke my heart. Not just that the realization that all of these awful things are done on purpose, but that people don't do anything about them. People besides Martin Luther King, of course, and Malcolm X, etc. Malala now. And all of this injustice is so depressing, but what made me really truly bitter was that whenever I would go talk to other adults about all these issues, they would essentially tell me that yeah, they knew about it, but they grew up and they no longer wanted to be revolutionaries. And 
I sincerely do not want to be one of those people. Not only do I not want to grow out of being a revolutionary, I don't want to grow up knowing that I'm one more person that contributes to everything that's fucked up in this world. And so what I propose is that we dismantle the superstructure. And in continuing to be honest with you, this is the true reason why I changed my channel from just being a diary because it felt like it was pointless. I'm not really doing anything that's positive for the world and telling you like one little funny line that I thought about. I really want to do something that will make me feel like I'm continuing to support those feelings that I felt when I was studying philosophy my last year. And because I want my channel to be a revolutionary tool, that means that you get to call me out should I ever not act in accordance to those beliefs. And I know that I alone can't change the world, but if all of us change our own lives in whatever way that we can, if you put it all together, then we can probably have a shot at changing a portion of the world at least. So let this video be an invitation for you to help me change the world. And you don't have to make YouTube videos, that's just my own personal choice. What you can do is pay attention to what you focus on on your daily life in terms of the superstructure. Think about it, every time that you watch Orphan Black, which has like 7 to 10 female protagonists, you're choosing not to give your attention to something like the pickup artist, which only reinforces male and female stereotypes that are not at all new or progressive. Every time you choose to play Minecraft instead of playing Call of Duty, you're celebrating a piece of media that is telling you to celebrate just the mere fact of being a human and being alive, because that's what truly Minecraft is. You're not really doing anything else, you're just simulating existence with a dragon at the end apparently, never got there, yet. While Call of Duty, well, some of you might love it, what it's essentially doing is just celebrating the fact that there's a lot of violence in society and celebrating the presence of the military in our own daily lives. And yeah, we don't get to see the military, but our military is alive and well, somewhere else creating wars. Every time that you give your money or time, and we have been almost told to think of those two things as the same. Anytime that you give your attention to any kind of media that isn't progressive, you're reinforcing those old ideas. And if I really have to explain what progress is and let you know that progress is just, you know, moving away from sexism, racism, homophobia or whatever other prejudices people want to have, well, you have been told. And just where we have the most power, it gets the most complicated because should I stop watching Tarantino for the use of violence that he has in his movies? I can honestly say that I cannot stop watching Tarantino or American Horror Story or a bunch of other stuff that I watch because when I analyze it, I can see that their intention is not to move humanity, not to hold humanity back from progress, but to use the use of those negative things like violence and racism or portrayal of racism really to bring it to light of how ridiculous it really is and in that way move humanity towards progress in a way that Call of Duty doesn't really quite get that through and I don't think it's trying to get that message across anyway but you know what I mean it's not about being perfect it's just about making a small commitment to yourself to be ethical an ethical consumer in whatever way that you want to be whether that means to you making media that is ethical or creating stuff in an ethical way and let me just say at the risk of sounding like a communist that the true revolutionary is guided with strong feelings of love so please go ahead and be the couch potato you were meant to be and help me hack the superstructure Thank you for watching, if you still are, I will see you in the next week's video. Hopefully it will come out on Monday. And if not, either just check my YouTube page or my Tumblr, or I have a website, meimeilingling.com. I haven't yet figured out how people can be told through the website that I have a video, but when I figure that out, I'll let you know. I'll see you in the comments and or Tumblr in the meantime. Bye!